Hi, everyone, and welcome to At Katie Couric. At least 5 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease, and as our population ages, that number will continue to grow. There's conflicting research about whether or not we can actually prevent or delay the onset of Alzheimer's, and that is the subject of today's web show. Jean Carper is a medical journalist and author of 100 Simple Things You Can Do to Prevent Alzheimer's. And before we start chatting, I'd like to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of our web show, Dove. Hey, Jean Carper, nice to see you. Hi, great to see you. We should mention that we worked together probably, what, 30 plus years ago we when did? CNN was called Chicken Noodle News, <laughs> and it just, that, that cable network was just in its infancy. Yes, it was. Yeah, so, that was great. You were, uh, let's see, you were a desk assistant, I that's think, right. then, and I was doing the medical uh, correspondent, and uh, you just loved the medical stuff. We worked together Yeah, that's several true. Things. Yes, I've were. always been very, very interested yeah, in medical I news, and, got, has, and, and I've were, gotten more interested in the years And you were always helping me produce things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> coming up with story ideas. But anyway, well, let's, let's talk about Alzheimer's, because I think it's something that people worry about. Oh. So many people are affected. And since the title of this book is 100 Simple Things You Can Do to Prevent Alzheimer's, people might say, really? You can actually prevent the onset of this disease? Well, what you can do is, is prevent the onset of the symptoms. Now, the fact of the matter is that as we all get age, older, maybe around 40 even, uh, we begin to have brain changes. And this can go on and it can become serious. And if it becomes serious so that you have actually Yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah, I've were. always been very, very interested yeah, in medical know, news, and got has, and I've were, gotten more interested and you were in the years always helping me produce things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> coming up with story ideas. But anyway, well, let's let's talk about Alzheimer's because I think it's something that people worry about. Oh. So many people are affected, and since the title of this book is one hundred simple things you can do to prevent Alzheimer's, people might say, "Really, you can actually prevent the onset of this disease?" Well, what you can do is is prevent the onset Hi, everyone, and welcome to At Katie Couric. At least 5 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease, and as our population ages, that number will continue to grow. There's conflicting research about whether or not we can actually prevent or delay the onset of Alzheimer's, and that is the subject of today's web show. Jean Carper is a medical journalist and author of 100 Simple Things You Can Do to Prevent Alzheimer's. And before we start chatting, I'd like to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of our web show, Dove. Hey, Jean Carper, nice to see you. Hi, great to see you. We should mention that we worked together probably, what, 30 plus years ago we when did? CNN was called Chicken Noodle News. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, that, that cable network was just in its infancy. Yes, it was. Yeah, so, that was great. You were, uh, let's see, you were a desk assistant, that's I think, right. then. And I was doing the medical uh, correspondent. And uh, you always loved the medical stuff. We worked together. Yeah, that's several true. Things. Yes, I've were. always been very, very interested yeah, in medical know, news, and, got, has, and, and I've were, gotten more interested in the years And you were always helping gone me produce things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> coming up with story ideas. But anyway, well, let's, let's talk about Alzheimer's, because I think it's something that people worry about. Oh. So many people are affected. And since the title of this book is 100 Simple Things You Can Do to Prevent Alzheimer's, people might say, really? You can actually prevent the onset of this disease? Well, what you can do is, is prevent the onset of the symptoms. Now, the fact of the matter is that as we all get age, older, maybe around 40 even, uh, we begin to have brain changes. And this can go on and it can become serious. And if it becomes serious so that you have actually Alzheimer's, then that is the uh, onset of the symptoms. However, before that, there may be 10, 20, 30 years in which you can do something to prevent the, sim the uh, memory loss from becoming severe enough to be called Alzheimer's. You know, you mentioned that like at age 40, and, and I'm 53, and I know that 
a lot of people worry, well, when is it just natural yeah. memory loss? Sometimes I'm looking for my cell phone when I'm on my cell phone. <laughs> I mean, well, and, and sometimes I'm doing things and I think, wait, why did I walk into this room? And, and I think it worries people because they yeah. think, gee, is this something I need to be concerned about or is this a, the natural course of events? Am I just getting a little bit forgetful? How do you know when it's when it's something you need to be concerned about? Well, that's a, that's a really good question, and it's sort of difficult to answer. But we have two different kinds of Alzheimer's. There's early onset Alzheimer's before age 60, and that is very highly inherited, and that is quite different from having a problem after age 60. So everybody's going to have a little bit of, of memory loss. Uh, and what you need to look out for is, first of all, memory loss is not the first symptom of no. Alzheimer's. There are other things like loss of sense of smell. That can be uh, an original symptom. Really? Uh-huh. Also, um, when you um, have problems with depth perception. Uh, you have trouble reading maps. You can't remember exactly where you were going in, in uh, traveling and across town even or stuff like that. Memory loss then comes on two or three years after that. So, but so you're saying initially you may just be disoriented? You, you could, well, more like your visual disturbances. Like you can't make the map connect to the location you're going to. Mm -hmm. Or you could have... Uh, senior moments that you know you you really do forget something but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have have Alzheimer's it may or may not go on to the symptoms and sometimes it has to do with genetics also um, I don't know if you know but I do have a major gene for Alzheimer's after age 60 now, that doesn't mean that I'm doomed or that I'm going to have it. It does mean that I am three times more susceptible to developing Alzheimer's. And this is something called this APOE4? APO, what's yes. it called? APOE4. APO e yes, it and is. And they, they discovered that when they were testing your cholesterol. Yeah, right? Yeah, simple Can, blood test. So they said, hey, Gene, you've got this, this no. specific no. thing? Or how did no. you find out? Nobody told me. I knew what the gene for Alzheimer's was. And so when I saw it come up on my chart, I said, oh, really, I'm in trouble here. Uh, no one in my family that we know had had it, but mm -hmm. my father didn't live long enough to know. My mother died at age 96, um, having had only vascular dementia for a little bit. Nevertheless, I do have it. It does make me more susceptible. My, my two sisters also have it, and my brother has it. 77 million Americans also have it. Now, I found out accidentally, but I'm glad I did because people always ask me, well, are you glad you know it? And I am because that means that I can find out that I know that I should be doing things to try to prevent it. And like, I don't want to get bumps on my head, for example. People with this gene who are subject to contact sports, a lot of concussions, are more likely to have Alzheimer's and other things. So I'm glad that I, that I know. Can and anyone it, find out, by the way, sure. if they have this gene? Yeah, yeah. You just does go it get show it. up on a routine cholesterol test? Well, I had a very sophisticated one from Berkeley Heart Lab, and they just did that. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I, I knew it. You can ask for it. It's very simple. My brother, my baby brother, I said he should get it. And um, <laughs> I hate to say I'm not sure he really wanted to know, but he did have it. It cost him a couple hundred dollars, and now he's more aware of things to do. So you say early onset uh, Alzheimer's, there is a genetic component. Very genetic. But after 60? After 60, there is a genetic component, but it changes from being a determinant. Under 60, it's, it can be really inherited and determinant. And after age 60, it's not. So you have great opportunity to try to slow down the symptoms. What you really want to do, Katie, is slow down the progression. If I can slow down the progression of this, I may totally outlive it. In other words, if I was going to get Alzheimer's, let's say at 90, and I get it instead at 95 or 100 or 110, it's going, I'm going to prevent it. And people can 
really do that. And we're going to talk about some of the things you can do. But first, neurologically, Gene, what happens to your brain when Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's takes creeps over. in? Yes. It's, it's really... Um, it's like a protein? Or yeah, what there is are it? proteins. This is all controversial still. There are lots of scientists who don't think that we really know what causes it. But the two theories are right now that you get plaques in your brain. They develop in your brain called beta amyloid. And you get tangles of something called tau. And these two together conspire to kill your brain cells. As the brain cells die your brain shrinks. You lose brain matter, especially in the memory centers of the hippocampus, and therefore your memory declines, and then it gets progressively worse and worse and worse. Um, they are trying to find ways of preventing the plaque from forming, but once you have the severe symptoms, it's very unlikely that you can do much about it. We don't have any drugs now. The last drug that uh, was tested made Alzheimer's patients worse, and it cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So there is no cure. So right now, the scientists that I talk to say that our best and maybe only hope is to get people to do things to slow down the symptoms. And if we can do that, it's going to save a lot of people. The Alzheimer's Association actually has an initiative for this. And they have said, if we could slow down the symptoms of Alzheimer's by five years, in other words, if you're going to get it at 90, you get it at 95, that would prevent 1,600,000 Americans from getting Alzheimer's by the year 2015. That is really dramatic. Imagine saving that many people from uh, the Alzheimer's that we know is, is, as you said earlier, is like a tsunami now. Is it because they would die before they would get it if you if you delay it for five Ex years? Well, in, in a sense, yes. Or you would die of something else. Or you would die of something else. Uh, but people are living longer. But it's possible that you could live to be 95 or 100 and uh, still be perfectly, uh, I mean, and perfectly good. You may have some problems, but you won't have the severe symptoms of the onset of Alzheimer's, which means truly dementia. I mean, you, when you're dement, demented, you are totally uh, out of it. Uh, you have, you can't take care of yourself, and you know you have no short-term memory. It is a very tragic, it is a huge human tragedy, and yet the scientists I talk to say we can slow it down and in some ways, with all these hundred simple things that they told me about. They told me about it. I wrote it down. Let me ask you, before we get to some of the simple things, what about, you know, I see ads for this drug Aricept uh -huh. on television. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, and they take the grandmother to the yeah, doctor and yeah. she's put on Aricept. Do any of these kind of uh, neuro enhancers, if you will, do, do they work at all? Well, I know uh, you, you're supposed to take them immediately, correct? So well, that your first sign of symptoms? As, what is the science shown? As quickly as possible, yes. Um, what it shows is that Aricept does boost the production of a transmitter in the, and that it can enhance your memory. Uh, it, it only deals with the symptom. It does not deal at all with the underlying progression of the disease. So it's really not a cure, and it's not going to keep people from really progressing in the but brain it does, damage. But it, it does slow it down? It does. It, it, well, what it does is it may boost your memory a little. I mean, people I've known said, yes, it does help. It is by no means a panacea here. And, and what you want is, though, Katie, you want to stop. You don't want to ever develop the memory problems that would have to cause you to take Aricept. If you, we can not develop these symptoms, if we can hold them off by making our brain stronger and doing all these things, then you would never get to taking Aricept. And are there any other medications in the there pipeline are, there that are show promise? There are a few others, but actually, I hate to say no, and some of the really important doctors and researchers I talk to, they, they just don't think that it's going to happen because when you have Alzheimer's, you have dead brain cells resuscitating a dead brain cell is difficult. There is no Lazarus here. If you have a sick brain cell, you might really be able to help it. But when they're dead, the brain cells are dead and their brain has shrunk and 
very difficult. Nobody knows of anything. Well, let's talk about some of the simple steps. First of all, I have to ask you, number 66 is take a multivitamin. And you, the book contains a disclaimer saying that you don't profit from the sale of any nutritional supplements. But I have to ask you this, Jean, because your build is the founder of this website site called Stop Aging Now, <laughs> and it does sell vitamins. So, yes, so uh, do you no longer have a role at that absolutely, website? No, none whatsoever. A long time ago, because people asked me to, I developed vitamins to go with another book I wrote called Stop Aging Now. People love them. Uh, but I sold the company uh, three or three and a half years ago, and I have no financial interest. I do not benefit at all, and I have no management in that company. Okay, no. and well, what about this number 66, take a multivitamin? Yeah, uh, my, was... my counter, my kitchen counter is full of <laughs> bottles of unopened multivitamins. <laughs> I mean, I've got the one a day, silver, I've got Centrum, whatever. That's Centrum, Silver. And you know, what the heck? I mean, uh -huh. how important is that? I should be I taking them. I just can't seem to make myself. Well, you know, I think <laughs> just taking one pill a day, is it that hard? <laughs> hard no, to no, do? no. And you can't but, take it on an empty stomach. That's part oh, of I it see. for me. Oh, I yeah. see. Well, take it any time of day. Most people take it in the morning. I say take it at night. What difference does it make when you really take it? But why does but, a multivitamin okay, seem to that, save off? This was exciting research to me because I did not know this. This was a fairly recent uh, research done by actually the U.S. government uh, at, at NIH. They found out that there it's a chromosomal thing. You have chromosomes, and the people who had the longest kind of caps on there were aging more slowly. I mean, it's hard to explain, but they were aging more slowly. Mm -hmm. And they found in a study that the people who took the multivitamins were aging more slowly, and Harvard research showed that the people who were aging more slowly with these chromosomes we're about 50% less likely to get Alzheimer's. Obviously, if everybody stayed young, we wouldn't have Alzheimer's. So slowing down the aging process is what the multivitamins were doing. And it slowed it down by about 3% if you were taking a Centrum Silver. And they actually used Centrum Silver in the study. But if you were taking a multivitamin that also had high levels of antioxidants, it slowed it down about two and a half times more than the Centrum Silver. So both of them are good. One is just more powerful, but it is, I think it's rather dramatic evidence. And folic acid is really important. Folic acid. I know that, that it, it, it helps prevent colon cancer. I think some of our yes. studies show, yes. show that. Yes. But I always think folic acid is this wonder pill because it do, it is very helpful in a whole variety oh, of areas. Oh, right. yes. and, and is it for Alzheimer's as well? Well, I think one of the most fascinating studies done showed that people who took folic acid at 800 micrograms every day actually slowed down their brain aging by five years. In other words, if they should have had a brain that was functioning like age 60, the people who were taking the folic acid actually were functioning like they had a brain of 55. And is folic is the amount of folic acid you need in your average multivitamin, or do you need to get an additional well, supplement? Most, How much do you need a day? Most multivitamins have 400 micrograms, the, the weaker ones. I take 800 micrograms in one that I take. And 800 micrograms was what they used in this particular study. Any other vitamins or supplements like fish oil or I know yeah. that you recommend eating uh, fish. fish high in omega. Yeah, fatty fish, fatty salmon, fish. salmon, sardines, and tuna. Tuna, yeah. even though that has mercury in it. Well, you don't I know, about that's that. why. <laughs> the smaller fish are better. If you, if you had one fish that would really be the best for you, and a lot of people don't like it. I happen to love it. Sardines. Yeah, I don't really That's like sardines, but I sardines. like salmon. Salmon, so. salmon is great. Salmon but can, is great. what about eat, having those in, in pill form, that kind of omega? Yes, is yes. it omega-3, is I, that what it's called? Or? Yes, it is omega-3. And the fact is that even fish eaters, even people who are high fish eaters, probably ought to take the pills, maybe 800 milligrams of a pill every day. And especially one, now I don't it want to get your counter even fuller than it is now. Yeah, but that's okay. But DHA, DHA is the type of the component of the fish oil that does the brain the most good. The brain is highly made up of DHA fat, and it has to have that in order to function. So DHA is the best kind, and even vegetarians can get it because you can get it in algae form, and you just take the, the pill uh, 400, 200, 
no, I, I use a day. Okay, so we're saying multivitamin, yeah. just to get this straight. Yeah. Fish, oil fish oil that has that is DHA? Yeah, uh, fish oil, yes, you can get the one, but you can get the DHA also. And additional folic acid. Anything and additional else? folic acid, yeah, B12. B12. B12 is, uh, a recent study was just done where they gave B12 500 micrograms, the folic acid, 800 micrograms, and B6, 20 milligrams, and guess what they found? These weren't people who were starting to lose their memories. They found that those people, their brains were less likely to shrink by about 30 to 50 percent. Wow, I'm going to have to go it's to the store. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, let's talk about... And guess how much that cost? 15 cents a day. Yeah. We're talking about $60 a year for something that can help keep your brain cells alive as so that you don't lose, uh, have brain shrinkage. Let's talk about food. Um, I know that you, you say eat foods rich in anti uh, antioxidants like blueberries, blueberries, raspberries, what, dark the green berries, leafy. Strawberries, spinach, all of those. And you, in fact, have a list of sort of foods. What yeah. else is high in antioxidants? Uh, well, all the, all the fruits and vegetables, some of them are just higher, but right. all the berries, I mean, they look fantastic. And I think it's fascinating about the, the berries, especially blueberries, because they actually stimulate the, the birth of new brain cells. Really? In, I need in to eat animals. more blueberries, yeah. Gene. Okay, what about alcohol? You say that drink some alcohol, but not too much. Yeah. So how much bit. ideally should you be ideally, drinking? Ideally, a glass, in my opinion, of red wine a day, preferably with food. And why, why red wine? Well, I because we... red wine is one of those and high in antioxidants. And when they did studies, they found out in, at least in animals, that the red wine actually helped keep the gunk away, the beta amyloid in the brain. Wow, and I was surprised that it, you recommend drinking apple juice, which has a lot of sugar in it, and I try to avoid that. But okay. you think it's well, a good thing? Uh, well, I, I do because they tested it, but let me say, if you don't want to drink the apple juice, eat the apples, same thing. And when we talked about Aricept earlier, Apples actually, in these studies, functioned somewhat the same way as Aricept by boosting the production of the same neurotransmitter, the messenger. So, so an apple a day. An apple a day or two apples a day, even better. Okay. And also exercise. Let's talk about that because um, I just saw some study that said women who sweat when they exercise <laughs> or perspire uh, have a 30% uh, uh, their, their, their risk of getting endometrial endometrial cancer goes down something like oh, 30%. Oh, goes down. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, goes yeah. Down. No, 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 no. It goes yes, down. Right. I, that was just sort of one study. But we hear, obviously, the importance yeah. of exercise. How specifically does that translate in keeping your brain healthy? Oh, well, that's, that's I, I suspect they said sweat because it's aerobic exercise. Right. And that, in all the studies, they have found that aerobic exercise is probably the best, but any exercise is, is good. How often do you need to exercise uh, to really the, have the, the full uh, the mental benefits? The ideal would be to ha get 30 minutes uh, a day or at least 30 minutes three times a week of aerobic exercise. Now, the good news is that they used to say you have to get all of it together. No, you can walk 10 minutes, then 10 minutes, then 10 minutes at a different time, and you can do it on a treadmill, too. Obesity has a big impact on, on the brain, yeah. doesn't it? Well, does. It that does. increase your risk of Alzheimer's yes. if you're yes. overweight or obese? Yes, because it shrinks your brain. When you are obese at middle age, your brain is, shrinks more, and they've done this with PET scans. It's really quite astonishing that they can see that the volume of the brain is less. What about things like coffee, chocolate? Are those good <laughs> yeah, things for... Yeah, coffee is great. Were you drink, drinking coffee or tea? Uh, I'm a coffee drinker. Oh, okay, that's fine. But I drink I'm, tea, too. I yeah, drink no. them both, actually. I that's drink good. a lot of that's coffee good. and tea. Okay, black tea, green tea, it's all good. But the recent stuff is it's showing that coffee, actually, seems, especially with caffeine, actually seems to be very good for the brain. In studies, th people who drank three to five cups of coffee a day in a big European study showed that it reduced their risk 65 percent. Caffeine helps reduce the buildup of the bad stuff in the brain and okay. may even help wash it away. What about doing mental exercises, uh, you know, uh, uh, gee, all sorts of games like crossword puzzles, Scrabble, Can things like that. Can you do those? Uh, yeah, I, I play Scrabble 
on my iPad against the you computer. Do? Oh wow! How yeah, are which you? is are really you good? fun. I I often kick the computer's butt. I got to be oh, honest with you. Golly! Yeah. Well, the computer isn't that great at Scrabble oh, no? always, but oh, no? uh, is it important to do? Well, you know, because I've always heard and I've always wanted to, if I had time, learn a new language. Yes. Learn yes. a dancing yeah. is apparently yeah. really yeah. helpful. Yeah in terms of keeping yeah. your mind agile yeah. because you have yeah. to your spatial reasoning gets mm -hmm. kind of honed. Are those are those things in the book? Do they show yeah. to be effective? Yeah, yeah, they really do. And uh, all of it, I wanted to get back a little bit to the mental. Yeah, yeah, of course, I, yeah. I think that's great. You know, any five-year-old child can beat me at Scrabble. I can't do crosswords. Really? I just don't do them. I'm However, surprised. I don't know, but it, you know. It's I, just not your thing. It's not my thing. However, this is the thing that in mental activity, if you are whizzing through crossword puzzles and you're just doing them like this, you're not getting the benefit. Your brain is not getting the benefit. You have to make an effort. You have to stretch it. You have to make, you have to challenge your brain cells or they don't grow bigger. Now, if you challenge them, you're going to give birth to a lot more brain cells and keep them alive. But you have to do, like learning another language for you probably would do something like right. it would for me because I have a hard time with that. So you would say, I want to try that. And it doesn't even mean that you have to succeed, just the mental effort. So people have to know that they have to make a mental effort. Uh, and, and they can try anything. And also, try something new. The brain lights up. The minute you try something new, and they found that people who try something new and learn new things all the time, that, that their brain cells really operate much better. And you, we, we reached out to a blogger, Gene, who writes about Alzheimer's. His name's Bob DeMarco. He runs the Alzheimer's yes, Reading yes, Room. Yes, yes, And he started because of the experience caring for his mom. And he submitted some questions um, on the behalf of his online community, and, and one of them is many Alzheimer's caregivers lament. Mm -hmm. This is not the person that I knew. How can you help people? That must be a very lonely, <sighs> agonizing experience, taking care of someone who is is fading away before your eyes. Oh, I, I can't think of anything worse, really. That's why I'm so committed to trying to help people not get to that point. But I want to say about Bob DeMarco, he, run, he is a saint. He runs a wonderful uh, website, blog site, that helps people What's it all called? the time. It, is it's um, the Alzheimer's Reading Room. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes, and, and it's, a, it's a very good thing. Uh, but it's sad that, I mean, we have, I think he has said that we have like 100 million Americans involved with caring for, for people. It is just overwhelming, and it is tragic. And I know that Bob Butler, who was a friend of mine who was at the National Institute on Aging, always said, it is more tragic for the people who have to take care of the people with Alzheimer's, really, than it is for the victim. What advice would you give them? I mean, I think there's a lot of, it's nice because the internet at least affords these folks some online yes. support. Yes, Right? I, and it's probably less lonely given that oh, other I, people are in the same boat. I, I, I think so too. And, and honestly, I think that people who are caregivers for other people are more concerned about themselves too that they may be a uh, possibility of inheriting it. Um, and therefore, I think that they need to look after themselves and make sure that they're doing all kinds of things to uh, prevent this. So do you practice what you preach, Jean? Yeah, I sure do. You do? <laughs> what, what, yeah. what are the ones that you do most regularly? Well, uh, oh, I do all. I do the. I, I didn't use to drink coffee. I drink a cup of coffee. I spike it with chocolate powder in the morning. I got a wow, treadmill. I want to hang out with you. I play tennis three times a week with the pro. I go to the gym twice a week. Um, I do eat, yoga now. Yeah, I antioxidants. Eat all the, I eat all the antioxidants. And you, do you and take things. all the supplements that you describe? Uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. but you're not good at crossword puzzles or Scrabble. So, <laughs> no, what no. do you do for sort of mental gymnastics? Do you, I mean, what do you do that kind of challenges your you know, brain? You know, you write books, obviously. I know, <laughs> I, I know you're going to think this is <laughs> what, but I honestly feel that I, since, since I wrote this book, that my brain is really better, and it is quite a stretch working. You know, writers work 10, 15 hours a day, and I did work that much getting all this information. I feel my brain is actually a, a lot stronger, so I do I do all these things. And I now, as a result of doing the book, I'm not so scared about taking on new things because you always say, "What if I fail? This will be terrible. It'll mean bad." You say it's good the for my brain. Is, it's good for your brain in any event. So just do it. I'm going to take up 
I'm going to take an acting class. That's something I have never done and would be scared to death to do. I am trying to learn Spanish. Uh, it's very slow for me, yeah. but it's a good effort. And as you pointed out earlier, people who know other languages, if you have children, try to get them to learn another language because being bilingual or having multilingual, I mean, that is very protective for the brain. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of kids are now learning Mandarin because there's going to be so much right. <laughs> business going on in China. Well, I think you should continue to write books if you feel like your Thank brain you. got stronger <laughs> in the process. And Jean Carper, the book is 100 Simple Things You Can Do to Prevent Alzheimer's and Age-Related Memory Loss. Thank you so much. It's so good to see Thank you, Thank you. It's great to see After you. After all these years. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. Anyway, thanks again, and thank you all for watching. And remember, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Katie Couric. And you can see all the episodes of this web show anytime at cbsnews.com. I've got my marching order. I'm, uh, orders. I'm going to the health food store to get all my vitamins. I'm going to go to the grocery store, although I eat pretty healthy. And you'll come and play tennis with me. Yes, I will, actually. I've been playing tennis pretty regularly great, myself. So great. I will uh, challenge you to a to a game. And now stay tuned for a message from our sponsor, Dove.